It's May 16th, 2005, and we're here in San Rafael, California, at Dan Millman's home. He's been gracious enough to give us an interview. And first, Dan, I just wanted to thank you for uh, letting us come here and, and be with you today. Well, it's and, my pleasure. And um, it's hard to know where to start. There's so much I want to talk to you about. So I figured we'd, we'd just dive right in. Um, you make a point that really everything is a spiritual lesson all the time. 24-7, life is always teaching, life is always giving, there are always opportunities. Now, a lot of people have made this kind of point and made it in a way that it always felt a little shallow to me or a little bit too new agey, as we say. But as I was reading this, uh, you said this in another interview, um, I felt that the thing that makes your work so real for me and for so many people is that you coherently live what you teach and you teach what you live and this is this is what is actually true for you that you do experience reality in this way you've given me about three days seminar worth of material to talk about uh, Jordan let me start by responding to your comments uh, first of all it's always dangerous assuming that a teacher lives what they teach because we can't know unless we observe someone each day all day for a long period of time um, I can state it, any teacher can say that I, I live according to my principles, uh, but it's always good to remain, uh, to trust our own instincts. If we're with a teacher, we get an intuitive sense of whether they're living what they teach. It's not just their appearance or the clothing they're wearing, but if they speak with a certain authority, um, and even that can be deceptive. So I urge people to go into any relationship with a teacher or anyone with their heart open but their eyes open as well. So, um, yes, as it happens, I do sincerely practice all the principles that I, that I recommend and express to people. And if someone watched me all day for a number of days, it might be a bit boring, but uh, beyond that, uh, I think they'd find that I'm a pretty good example of what I, what I do uh, express to people in my various books. Now, it's important to know that many teachers today have, well, we overlap. We talk about many of the same overriding spiritual themes, and yet it's also important to understand how different teachers uh, speak differently and may actually have quite varying views on an approach to living wisely and well. But one thing we might all agree on, if we take a close look, that before there were books, before there were teachers and writers and seminar leaders, human beings were evolving and will continue to evolve independent of books and seminars and teachers. I see Earth as a, a divine school for human souls here. Daily life is our classroom. And many people have heard the term. They get the idea, sure, yeah, life, you know, we're here to learn. But we don't get the profundity of this, that life is an absolutely perfect divine school and each one of us is guaranteed to learn everything we'll ever need to know eventually we will learn the lessons because the lessons are repeated gracefully until we learn them and if we don't get the easy lessons they get more dramatic but eventually we do learn all the lessons we need now having said that uh, if someone accepts that idea okay life is God's school God's classroom and it's perfect and we'll eventually learn all we need why do we need teachers and seminarians semin you know and and authors like myself the reason I write and speak is because I found that I might be able to save people a little bit of unnecessary suffering, a little bit of time on the process. I provide a kind of map to the territory of everyday life. So life does the teaching, but I'm a facilitator. I can only remind people of what they already know on some deeper level, but might have forgotten. And I express it in a certain way. So I don't teach because I say I know more than everyone else. I'm quite well aware that it's in every one of us. However, um, I can say it with a certain clarity that people go, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I can use that. And it's almost like I knew that, but I've forgotten. I'm like a yellow highlighter in the book of life. That's what I do. I'm not here to tell people what truth is with a capital T or what's right or wrong or what anyone should do with their life because I respect the process of each individual I speak with too much. I see the Buddha and the Christ within them. It's a wonderful practice to remember that. Uh, maybe it's hidden deeply. Maybe it's lost in veils of fear in certain individuals. But the Buddha and the Christ are still shining in there. And my calling, my mission is to help bring that out a little bit more. 